कभी कभी कुछ जीतने के लिए कुछ हारना भी पड़ता है और हार कर जीतने वाले को ही बाजीगर कहते हैं वेलकम टू आर स्पेशल वुमेन्स डे पॉडकास्ट आई एम योर होस्ट सलोनी एंड टुडे वी सेलिब्रेट द हीरोइंस हु हैव टेकन द स्क्रीन बाय द स्टॉर्म आवर वुमेन्स आर इन प्लेइंग जस्ट अ विन और लूज दे आर रीराइटिंग द रूल्स ऑफ द गेम आई हैव अ पैनल ऑफ लवली लेडीज टुडे एंड टुगेदर वी आर गोना एक्सप्लोर हाउ वुमेन सेंट्रिक एंड प्रोटैगनिस्ट स्टोरीज आर स्पार्किंग अ रेवोल्यूशन इन द इंडस्ट्री one ground breaking narrative at a time so guys in a world where you know the damsel in distress was the norm how are women centric films turning the damsel into the hero and what impact is it having on our industry so uh, i think i'd like to you know chip in here uh, saloni um, the good part is obviously that you know the women centric movie uh, uh, article 370 being one of the recent one doing really well it has already entered into 100 crore club and people are also asking you know for a national award for the film you know so the kind of acceptance the film has received it's it's very commendable and also the fact that you know people uh, you know, uh, going for movies like jawan and all they are also accepting the other side of the cinema the parallel parallel cinema okay now the sad part of this thing was there is a you know always a gray area wherein you know every women centric movie requires a man i know for women to take a stand you know if there is no man who are you taking a stand against you know and that is where i think the change is required so um i think uh, in today's day the audience is are very demanding right they want more storytelling they want that they their character should be played in the movie so that it's more relatable you know we've seen a lot of uh, uh, body shaming color shaming and all that's been happening around and we see that in movies now true movies which is being normalized it's being educated which i think is a fantastic factor and these characters they played so beautifully which are complex and driven and they're breaking all kinds of stereotypes so that's fantastic i think one of the latest movies uh, which were, i saw was dhak dhak right such a beautiful movie and what a amazing role played by uh, these movie characters uh, ratna pathak sha and diya mirza and fatima sana sheik right all these such beautiful characters ki yaar aap itne old age mein ho ke you learning to ride a bike kyun kyunki koi aur hai nahi aapka aap saath dena ko you like main apni zindagi ke sath kuch to karungi na and i think that is so beautifully done uh, it, it's amazing what movies are doing lately yes uh, you know i i definitely you know agree with my fellow panelists as well that there are a lot of new generation and also because the audience is being so demanding to see different narratives uh, there has been this slew of movies mostly on ott but nevertheless that are coming out the most recent i also sh- saw was uh, the bhumi pednekar movie bakshak which was quite interesting and it was quite female centric it was not very uh, it didn't have you know kind of a major uh, male counterpart as such uh, but having said that yes uh, you know there is a there's a faction which is still interested in this movies but then you also have certain movies which are still you know making waves be it animal be it uh, uh, all those kinds and and somewhere uh, that you know kind of uh, a uh, balance is still not to the same though yes these these movies are taking uh, taking a little bit of that center stage now absolutely i agree with all of you all and i think uh, you know from screen to society we can now draw a direct line between the rise of women centric narratives and you know the broader actual shift towards gender equality examples so do you have any in per your as per your experience do you have any narratives where you know you could uh, feel the impact these women centric movies have had in real life for example um, you know uh, the revolutionary name change of fair and lovely to glow and lovely breaking that stigma around brown skin so something like that that you are like it feels like personal win so something like that you all have experienced in your personal life in the corporate world or something i think one such movie was queen and uh, i was in my journalism when you know that movie had come a lot of uh, you know travel agencies and uh, you know this thing they started women centric travel which was not the case before this was back in 2015 14 and 15 yeah 15 and 16 in fact it had come and i could see the change you know uh, how people uh, saw women traveling 
you know and the whole and that was the same time when there was a lot of chaos when there was a lot of negativity in the country about women's safety also you know and uh, after that thing a lot of you know when these travel company and they started identifying women as their consumers which was not the case before people used to think that even if for a safety pin a women has to either ask for money or ask for an opinion for a man you know i think that movie kind of had a lot of impact and after that you know fashion came and then obviously the things the bar kept on moving and moving and moving but yeah i think it was one of the first movies and that it didn't show so normally what happens in the movie is there is a stereotype of you know a, a a badass woman okay i'm sorry for my language and then she goes and she comes and she conquers okay but in this movie a women was you know like it was like you know a saloni or a nichita or yashna or jagriti or zeel you know who came who you know like uh, who conquered you know and she said that you know what i am enough for myself i don't need a you know a man to kind of drive me or to tell me what is right or what is wrong and i think that movie had a lot of uh, you know impact on the society and how people also perceived it uh, you know a women or uh, their travel as a whole yeah and, and i think uh, you know queen having the kind of character which is like kind of intimidate and intimidated yeah. and then you know having gone all by herself after being left by a man it was mm. such a beautiful narrative and it was so empowering for each one of us like mm. life has an end after a breakup like you have so much to look forward to yes it is and you know also the fact that you know she's uh, she's just a normal middle class girl you know who's fighting her anxiety who is fighting uh, with the societal pressure that okay shaadi toot gayi hai what what now her life is over you know and uh, who's also who's in a different a foreign country as a foreigner doesn't know the language doesn't know the food but she makes her way out you know she at the end you find the way out and that's why she did i kind of feel the same for the movie english english where shri devi played yeah. this role right she went to us she didn't know english and then she joined these classes but then at the end if you see there's one statement by her husband made ki to laddu banane ke liye hi hai right and i felt that was like so stereotypical ki bhai a woman's job is not just being in the kitchen or just taking care of kids but there she was able to prove herself when she you know gave back an answer in english wahan pe jab bola ki wo to usko to english nahi aata and then she Gave a really nice crack answer in English. Well, I mean, that was, I think, one of the best scenes in the movie for me. So, वो पता चलता है कि भाई, if a woman wants to do something, she is going to conquer, whether you support her or you don't support her. So, she is capable of anything and everything. Yeah. Um, yes. Absolutely. And uh, uh, for me, I think this movie, lipstick under my burka, that was really interesting. uh it had because it had the narratives of so many different women different age groups uh coming from different kind of society backgrounds and um, of course that movie you know when it released it created a lot of buzz uh, at the workplace also there were a lot of women talking at uh, you know the lunch table at the water cooler uh, talking about these different aspects and uh, you know the common thread that was sort of running was uh, you know in society generally it is always said that a woman her life is very linear it's sort of from the day you're born there is a certain role that you're supposed to follow you you kind of you're born you get educated you do your job and then you get married and then maybe you know the responsibility of the home is completely with a woman and with a man uh, from the beginning you are told like you know you need to be sort of daring you need to be uh, all out there the risk factor becomes very appealing when it is a man and even sort of movies have enhanced that but if it is from a woman there are different names and words given to her you know uh, either she has to be a badass or she has to be like a sati savitri kind there's no in between uh, so so yeah i think that was a little bit of breaking that linearity uh, that that you know people or the audiences see absolutely some great examples you know uh, given by you all and i think i'm very proud to be a bollywood fan because even in bollywood these people are changing the you know basic narratives like a step mother is often seen as like the enemy of the child but you know shri devi's movie mom it changed the narrative entirely that you know um other such movies like uh, the recent one which came out is sukhi 
uh mm. starting shilpa shetty which talks about the needs of the women at a particular age so i think bollywood is now catering not only to the older or the uh, you know younger biased to a particular generation per se but they are you know catering to different different generations of women as well you know empowering them and all so yeah that's really beautiful to watch one movie that you know had 2023 by the storm was barbie barbie broke the box office but how is it actually breaking stereotypes and empowering young minds you know beyond the pink aisle because uh, as we all know and as we all say also some things happen only on tv some things happen only on movie so do you think that barbie in the real world like how what kind of an impact has uh, has it had on you know corporate world? i think uh, you know the whole narrative that the movie is trying to cater to you know and the whole audience is the kind of examples you're trying to set across uh, sadly in countries like india it didn't get communicated you know uh, as uh, somebody said here right now that you know she has gone for the movie and the whole crowd was pink first of all i don't understand why women is and pink why there is a color to a gender and why there is a color to a religion okay uh secondly the movie was very brutal in terms of breaking the stereotype and you know like you know a a a, a girl from a shell goes out in a real world and she's put up in a real world and you know she deals with things her beauty her aging her you know the whole idea of death you know the whole idea of money you know and but uh to some people here in india also you know when they said that i want to go for barbie they were like oh you want to go for barbie why don't you go with a, your girl gang i think you know the messaging was you know slightly this thing for a country like india they had already taken it otherwise you know we are a country who still celebrates a film like animal uh the problem is not with the film or the narrative the problem here in india is that you know if you are from bollywood or you are you are a filmmaker or producer uh you come you are shouldering a lot of responsibility you know because here it's a country of people you know hero worshiping good bad whatever it is the people will copy they get very easily influenced you know and i think uh, it's the responsibility of the makers you know what they want to portray because anything or everything that they try to portray good or bad people will adapt it now the way other countries uh, you know accepted the film babi versus indian days i think it was a lot of uh, difference you know and a gap also I I think that's just because of uh, you know uh, the way everybody has been brought up like Jill mentioned a couple mm-hmm. minutes ago ki bachpan se hi it's been like ki okay uh, this is how you have to be like for a man and this is how you have to be for a girl and since childhood it's been embedded into females that you are going to be the caretaker of the house you have to manage everything you have to adjust you have to serve the guests so involuntarily like even if you know somebody is coming in at the house by default a female becomes the host by default she serve it it's not that she doesn't like to do it or anything like that but a man will never get up to do it by himself unless you ask him to or he probably will get offended are mai kyu karu maine thodi kar raha like even as simple as picking up a plate after your dinner or something like that and i think the thing with barbie you mentioned very rightly ki why was the color pink associated with it so much that probably has to do with again like i remember 20 years ago when i was playing with barbies it was all pink and it has never changed till date it's almost like indian education ki usko upgrade nahi kara hai to barbie ke color ko bhi abhi tak upgrade nahi kara bringing you know yeah and the pink color if you actually go back to history it's actually associated with males it's not associated with females if you go back in history when you read about it i don't know much into depth about it but i've read just a piece of it and it's actually associated with men when did it associate with me- women who knows like humans are all times is changing everything and so, you know for us it is all about uh, you know being uh, after a point the diplomacy takes the center stage hmm. so and the convenience too so you know it became convenient that you know if there is pink it is soft and it is uh, you know perceived beautiful so then the pink became the women color i don't know if you all have noticed it but all the uniforms you know all the jobs white and blue are associated with the men you know so the responsibility the cloud you know uh, the the prosperity is coming all from 
men and you know the softness uh, the sensitivity coming from her. no it, it should not be that and i i really really agree with yashna when she is saying that it is all your conditioning and the bringing you know from the beginning also i am a mother of one uh, and you know af after a point you know when you start gifting a child a, you know like a uh, a gift or a toy also it is always that you know if it's a boy it has to be a car and if it's a girl it's a, it's a be you know doll and if he's playing with a doll you'll say like no 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 you're not supposed to why you're not supposed to play with that the from the very beginning you know why why can't my son wear a pink t-shirt why not it's you know i think the conditioning the stereotype is it, it within the women only and it's, it's 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 with us it's you know it is embedded here my mother has taught me that you know pink is my color and maybe i am going to uh, communicate the same to my son which is really really wrong i have to break my own stereotypes i have to break my own mold you know to be progressive and to think about some beyond you know the whole world you know i think there is still a facade that needs to be you know removed very interesting I mean, you know my father he loves to wear pink color sometimes i have to tell him you're wearing too much pink you have other colors in the wardrobe <laughs> like he will like five days in a row and he's got like five pink different shirts pink is a beautiful color no doubt it's just that i'm just trying to see over here that as a male you can like a pink color and yeah. it's pink. not a crime yeah not a crime yeah exactly <laughs> but i i i love the points that uh, both uh, jagriti and rach yashna spoke about that being so embedded it's almost like an unconscious bias you know it's so uh, it's so deeply ingrained in us as a society and uh, i'm no different okay i i happen to have a boy and a girl so i see both sides of these things and uh, it, you know you know when when we had our daughter everybody flooded us with everything pink and it was so overwhelming to see uh, so much of pink and now i make sure that i have other colors in her wardrobe it's not that you know she has to wear pink or my son can't wear pink uh, but yeah these kind of roles are so uh, you know sort of embedded in us so you know as i was mentioning earlier when i came out of the movie theater people were had a very mixed reaction to this movie barbie uh, i felt somewhere because of the kind of marketing that was done about the movie you saw all celebrities saying you know this kind of barbie and that kind of barbie uh, there was a feel that maybe it will go back to that nostalgia of playing with the barbie doll but when it spoke so openly about you know the patriarchy and feminism um, it did not sort of sit well with everybody and maybe they were expecting something different so it had a very mixed feeling is what what i felt um, yeah probably society is not at least within india we 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 still have a long way to go to you know still look at it as equal and uh, to look at the work as you know it doesn't have to belong to a specific gender it's depending upon who is available who is capable um you know i think as i being an hr professional since i'm also you know talking to a lot of women and young men out there uh, we need to for sort of actually talk about that elephant in the room talk about those stereotypes only then can we see you know the future generations being so open about it and not coming with those preconceived notions also i feel um, as um, as you mentioned uh, the film was marketed in a way that everyone tend to wear a pink dress or a shirt or anything and go to the movie and if you're not wearing that or doing that you are not con- like it doesn't make you watch the film like you feel like you're missing out on something you're missing out on this i remember one of my friends she wanted to go and watch barbi when it released and she didn't have a pink dress to wear so she literally bought one and went to the dress, uh, went to the film so i feel it's it's more about the color associated with the film is more about maybe the a good marketing strategy but yeah whatever points you all mentioned i i completely agree to it so so if you uh, see it uh, certainly they try to you know kind of associate the stereotype of you know uh, how women are stereotyped in our society and that's why the color pink sadly it didn't uh, you know landed well in in our own society where people started wearing you know the whole theme of pastel and pink uh, you know reflecting softness of a women yet she is going out and identifying herself and dealing with different issues you know be it career money uh, aging you know all of it the film was trying to you know deliver a narrative which didn't landed well obviously for a country like india for sure you know 
so there was uh, and uh, also you know the way people uh, marketed it the reels the social media you know it has a huge impact i i myself you know we are we are we mix team in my company good 10 12 people we were all that and we were asked to wear you know uh, so from the new generation boys they asked me to wear pink and come and we did, we also did the reel high barbie reel okay uh so obviously the marketing was good but somewhere it overpowered the whole brand narrative i feel you know um i totally agree with you all i think when barbie was you know doing the round in the cinemas there was also another movie which was oppenheimer and yeah. there was an entire you know battle between uh, a certain generation of males and females that which movie is going to do better but then again you know seeing some boyfriends accompanying their girlfriends to go watch barbie was something that was you know very very supportive and very beautiful to watch um as you all said you know representation matters but so does reception how audiences worldwide react to you know the shift towards women centric stories is also something that you know we have to take into consideration but uh, let's talk numbers can we correlate the financial success of women led projects with a shift in the societal attitudes and gender equality so um i see that women centric films like i predominantly watch hindi cinema and uh, the shift on women centric movies has been great in the recent past i guess maybe a decade and more a, a more than a decade and the shift has been great because i feel the mainstream actors mainstream heroines who were particularly doing a dharma movie or a yashraj movie are now doing a women centric film which has content which is uh, which talks about the society talks about the uh, about the issues that women are facing women centric movies were there in the 80s and the 70s but that were more pa- uh, considered into like a parallel cinema they were not mainstream a film like razi a film like kahani because vidya balan and alia bhat and such actresses are doing such movies it reaches out to the audiences razi was not a high budget commercial it was not tend to be a commercial commercial film but it went on to become a commercial movie and such as i i i even feel a, a movie like thappad all these movies because they are done by these actresses and they are reaching out to its audiences and that's making that's making an impact rather than uh, people people the movies were there movies like bazaar earth these were all mo- the movies in the 80s that shabana azmi smita patil these actresses were doing but it was not reaching out to the audiences maybe because it was categorized under the parallel cinema wave during that time but now because it's become more mainstream i feel it is a, a kind of reaching out to the audiences i i kind of agree to nachita you know also the fact that you know this um, right now the makers you know so people like i don't know if you all have the seen this movie darling which is produced by alia but this is her ah, first production okay. and uh, then movies like you know nh10 and uh, you know pari and all which is from clean slate which is owned by you know anushka sharma okay the makers have taken the front row that saying that you know what this kind of movie on a promote and this is the kind of content we want looking for if you see darling it's it's a very you know it's an indie film i think uh, you know which is close between the budget of 3 to 4 cr the locations were not very uh, you know this thing ambitious uh, uh, the cast was obviously uh, on the point but the beauty of the film was a story you know a women who is uh, you know uh, who is being beaten up by husband every day every day one day she gets up and she says no enough can't take it won't take it you know and the kind of uh, you know uh, acceptance that movie got you know and same was the case with nh10 uh same was uh, the case with uh, you know your pari and all uh, pari didn't do well uh, you know uh, financially but the movie has a beautiful narrative you know and also it coming from a women producer and the best part of it is you know, like people like meghna gulzar or disha jha and all taking the front row and they are delivering such kind of movies with like you know razi and all which is doing really good you know and people are accepting it with the mainstream heroines you know had this i don't know the response if it had been a very unknown faces and all like there's this movie uh, you know uh, called paglat 
by Shania Malhotra. I don't know what kind of response it got, but obviously it got monetized with the OTT and there were audiences. That also shows the fact that you know the producers are not very confident about the financial success of the film, and hence they don't do a theatrical. They just go straight away monetize it with the OTT. You know. So that apprehension, the day we kill the apprehension, I think that will be a win-win for all of us because then they see that you know, okay, there is a market. Uh, there is a film like Three Seventy, which is doing well. It has already entered in the hundred CR club, and it will do well. Now the producers are having that confidence that you know they can release such movies and it can do well. You know, and I think one of the first movers, again going back to my conversation, was Queen. You know, uh, a women-centric film with heroine, no hero, did exceptionally, you know, well critically and financially both. And I, I feel like uh, as we move on, like because of this women education and breaking the stereotype, movie theater, and all of this stuff is happening. Uh, people are wanting to see more stuff. See, at the end of the day, uh, it's usually. Or what I have witnessed, you can say I will not. I don't want to stereotypicalize it, but uh, because there is a large audience of females that that are at home, so they're able to you know give more time to maybe watching a television or maybe able to take some more time out to watch a movie. They want to see themselves grow. They want to. See It's being represented, which basically means that the demand for female-centric roles is also increasing. And when that is increasing, it's obvious that the financial part of it also will increase, right? The byproduct. So it's basically this demand wala play over here. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I think Bollywood and for that matter, any movie that we go to as Indian audiences, maybe we view it more from an escapism point of view. Uh, that's why the heroes are larger than life. The everything is larger than life and sort of blown up. And uh, if if you know a movie is seen as something which is very close to uh, our own lives, then there is that apprehension that will it go into that? Will will it really be profitable? because then it may not really go into that 100 crore club and maybe probably that's the apprehension why uh, these sort of uh, stories or anything which is more realistic always the the route is more preferred to go on ott or other uh, other avenues but on the flip side if we see you know to uh, when it is with uh, hollywood we do see a lot of women centric movies and they do they get released in india and people do go and watch it so somewhere i think that sort of uh, the way it is marketed it 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 sort of needs to take uh, you know it may may need to kind of gradually evolve in that sense uh, to be able to take those risks and we have more movies like queen i remember as a kid i didn't watch this movie in a theater i i watched it on a vcr at at someone's place it was khoon bhari mang and that movie had a huge impact on me i laugh when i watch the movie now uh, because some of the scenes were you know so uh, such that you know you can't even relate to it but that whole uh, scene of rekha going on to that horse with the leather jacket and you know kind of uh, you know really taking the revenge it was something so exciting and as kids we were really over the moon watching it and we were rooting for her so that is quite you know again larger than life so i don't think anybody will really you know uh, metaphorically they may do that but not really so it 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 has to move to a certain extent then 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 i saw kill bill couple of years later and uh, that too i mean of course it's it's a different genre altogether and it's so it's quite violent and Uh, the way the woman is a complete badass into it so yeah i mean the the way women evolve i think uh, yeah that that gap has to be bridged into being more larger than life and coming into looking at reality find that middle ground and probably that's where we could have more of those movies maybe and movies you know they have a huge huge role on impacting everybody's mind uh people get influenced so easily especially for those especially those people who don't have a worldly view you know who probably haven't traveled as much or probably who haven't had that much exposure in life they especially need to be educated on those grounds and that is why entertainment has a huge role to play on the kind of movies they're making and maybe not always again see business at the end of the day is business everybody is looking to make money right but maybe not always it has to be seen as oh will it 
परफॉर्म दैट फाइनेंशियली वेल और इज माई एम टू एजुकेट वेमेन और मे बी यू नो फीमेल्स हु आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम समथिंग बट क्रिएट अ मूवी लाइक डार्लिंग्स टू टेल दैम यू डोंट हैव टू सफर यू कैन टेक अ स्टैंड फॉर योर सेल्फ एंड स्टॉप इट राइट देर एंड देन सो दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट right i think you know digital platforms have been a game changer when it comes to content and even female artists are like changing the game for women centric content creation changing the narrative altogether but uh, i would like to understand from you all that you know how brands are aligning themselves with the wave of women empowerment are they truly supportive or is it just like another marketing gimmick marketing strategy for them yeah so but uh, here i would also like to mention uh, you know a marketing campaign that was done by whisper like a woman i don't know if you all have seen it but it's like uh, breaking stereotypes of you know laugh like a woman a couple of people uh, in the older age were asked to you know walk like a woman laugh like a woman and they were doing all like over dramatic uh, you know gestures but when a young girl of 7 or 8 years old was asked to you know run like a woman and she was running and people were like why did you run that way and they're like you know because what does it mean for you to run like a woman it's like it means to run as fast as i can yes so these uh, brand branding and marketing you know uh, campaigns have such a huge impact on us it really like uh, strings the bell somewhere so what are your thoughts on that when it comes to the indian brands uh, making a change so oh, i guess first of all these yeah <clears throat> so uh, first of all these uh, actresses themselves are launching their own beauty products and beauty brands these days that itself markets in um, i think dipika padukone has this brand called 82e which is not a cosmetic brand but a skin care brand so they are focusing more how inclusivity can be brought in in terms of not just using cosmetic brands but also skin care brands um katrina kaif has her brand which talks about having different uh, skin tones and especially for brown skin tones how to how to make it more inclusive and these things i think of course they are a great marketing strategy to attract the audiences but moreover i feel because these celebrities are having their own brands people uh chain or a lipstick even i can do that so that kind of a shift um i feel that is there but it's yet to reach where people can just get up and say whatever i want i can apply and do or stuff like that uh the uh, share the load campaign that was there with uh, ariel i think that was something quite uh, game changing i would say because for decades we've just seen those typical ads with women washing whether it is a a uh, modern sort of woman or whether it is somebody more traditional but that's been the way it is and if you see now there are a lot of ads in fact uh, some of the the surf ad which it's it's the father and son who are you know kind of putting the clothes the dirty clothes for washing and it's not only women so i think that is at least that, that has a lot of impact i would say having young kids at home even seeing that it's not seen as that a certain gender has to do the responsibility it is definitely something which is uh, both you know both partners can you know be a part of and uh, rightly what uh, nichita has said that you know these celebrities who are endorsing their own brand so it's not about just being a pretty face and being on screen they could also be uh, into businesses they could also be you know doing other roles co-founding different initiatives so uh, that has i i would say definitely had an impact on the next generation and the way they are perceiving things I I kind of agree to what these girls are saying, but uh, I have something to add on this. Uh, you know, the marketers and uh, the brands have recognized this new T G called women or females as they are this thing that you know they are the decision maker now, so we have to target them. So be it a Walmart or a IKEA or uh, you know Surf Excel or a Whisper, they have identified the women, and they are creating campaigns uh, for them. however when it comes to investing in a women or you know investing a a finances or a commercials in a women centric film a lot of apprehension comes so i i speak as a producer when we uh, so even we are you know producing a women centric film right now and when we write to film you know uh, brands and we ask them for a cross collabs and all it all the question is that who's the hero 
you know i don't know when this whole uh, the jargon or the word changed from an actor to a hero you know and a hero into a slut you know because of a a, a a a film a women in film in 90s or 2000 till 2000 sadly was seen as a, a heroine as a slut because you know and we we used it in a general uh, you know term that you know as what heroine lag rahi hai what do you mean by heroine lag rahi hai hero or heroine is supposed to be a a person who is fighting back who is fighting for right things when did this become a slut and a hero becomes a hero already he is a male male counterpart and he is a hero you know so till today sadly in 2024 when we go and we uh, we work on lot of you know brand collabs as well and when we go to brands and we say that you know we are making a women centric film and i think it has great scale or, you know um, scope and so then who you know why can't the why can't the story be the hero of the film you know and uh, we are still there and i'm just you know fingers crossed i'm waiting for that that thing to change until that is changed i think we are going to be living in you know 1980s Uh, for another you know 10 20 years maybe agreed and when we see there's a small uh, ad uh, role in uh, rocky rani ki prem kahani when alia bhat comes into the uh, other family's office and uh, she sees the ad where all these women are in the kitchen and uh, preparing uh, mithais so she laughs at the ad and then uh, she says ki aaj ki date mein kaun karega because it's a very gen z related movie right gen z millennial type ki movie hai wo so nobody is going to like agree to this and there's going to be a lot of chaos in the market ki bhai aaj ki date mein bhi sirf ladkiyan hi cook karti hain that's not the case then she gave an idea to change the narrative to let the males be the cook in the ad which then which is shown in the movie to have been a very successful campaign meaning that uh, which we were talking a little while ago ki if you are female centric that has become a marketing gimmick as well yeah that yes. yeah so it's not just about ki women empowerment kahin na kahin it has become a marketing gimmick and uh, these kind of roles are very important like you don't have to any more be about just females females taking care and everything we have to have more inclusive roles for both men and women and when we're talking about this you know like the day when we stop saying women entrepreneur or start uh, you know wo women word har jagah lagana band karenge i think that's when it's going to come to gender equality and the kind yeah. of even in the film industry i've seen uh, you know big act, successful actresses talking about a uh, financial pay difference ki hero ko agar 10 crore mil raha hai to unko shayad 7 crore mil raha hai versus they are just an equal part of the movie they no less they are also a lead in the movie but they still getting paid less so so all that needs to change yeah i think one more campaign that comes into my mind when i you know uh, after listening to you guys is state street campaign of the peerless girl which was actually as used as a means to you know have more female workers into companies so yeah uh, the change is happening but uh, it is a little slow but uh, you know um, in celebration of the success how do we actually navigate the criticism that some women centric projects face for not being inclusive enough Even if it is female, uh, it is not inclusive for the women. So, how do we navigate that? I think you know the voice has to come, uh, you know, within us. Uh, you know, uh, we as a women, you know, uh, when I saw this movie, as again I get back to my example, Animal. You know, I was disgusted with the whole thing. Uh, then again, I, I then so there are two things. You know, you see it as a creator. and then you see it as a women obviously as a women it's a disgusting film but you see as a creator it's a beautiful piece of art people you know uh, started making fun of it and people some people you know kind of sensualize it uh, when i when you see that director you know and his clips going viral on media his thoughts about a women and his thought about you know females that guy is something else you know <laughs> 
he has and he has a lot of guts to you know say certain things on uh, you know um, national television and we are you know uh, when there's a smallest of inconvenient a whole uh, you know a pseudo feminist you know they come they start shouting they just come with a you know a agenda and they say this is wrong but when a man is saying something like that on national cinema, you know television and you already know that the film is success you are not speaking about it and that's is this is where the problem is i feel you know the pseudo feminism has stopped when you say that a women and a male and a female is equal then why do you need a man to drop you home you know that conditioning that are bringing that self security has to come within us you know uh, if it is equal then you have to treat a man also equal a feminism doesn't mean that you know everything is a female centric it means that it has to be you know divided between both equally you know i think a feminism word is itself is wrong why it start with a femin you know it should not be feminine it should be something with equality and not a feminist i am a feminist that doesn't mean that i'm a you know i am somebody who doesn't believe in equality that's a whole fundamental you know in, i think meaning of feminism somewhere we have forgotten that you know and that is why the whole word itself has faced a lot of backlashes and lot of memes have been created and lot of you know uh, it's been spoken and i think it is abused a lot the word has been abused a lot you know that has to stop you know the the women right now in the center stage has to realize the power they are holding and the kind of you know responsibility they are shouldering you know when they set the narrative right i think we will be there right i completely agree with you jagriti um as you mentioned you know animal the movie so um, you know there were some parts where alpha male is shown as a dominant character and being toxic is associated to it are uh, toxic towards their women or their female partners um do you think that when a uh, when women centric films make the rounds or women centric narratives per se make the rounds they have to be very careful also to like be uh, careful in a way that they do not you know uh, hurt certain sentiments of people because in the backlash is 10 times more compared to you know as you mentioned the animal movie it it was a blockbuster when you when it comes to the box office it did not receive like uh, much of a backlash or the backlash was not very actively talked about but when it comes to female centric movies uh, do you think that people have to be you know very very protective about uh, not hurting the sentiments of people yes of course at a classic example of uh, it is one of my fellow you know uh, panelists just mentioned about uh, ballistic under a burqa you know so everybody when the film went released people just forgot about the kind of messaging it was trying to put that you know a sexual need is need to come what may you know or a women can go beyond the burkas and the you know the old needs of the world and they can get whatever they want they can ask i as a women have a right to ask if it is a sexual desire or a financial desire or a, you know a, a education whatever it is but that film faced a lot of backlash from certain society people you know why it is burqa first of all why there's a lipstick why they are talking about one community no it wasn't about the one community the whole word lipstick burqa symbolizes the fact that you know um, even if she is not seen she is within the burqa she is applying the lipstick for her own self you know a self pleasure you know and it was not received well so obviously the makers has to be very very careful with the kind of messaging they are put because we don't want to get into trouble because of, and the sad part is that you know a film like animal and all uh, you know uh, being given a green signal you know by the critics and a lot of films are being asked to cut down the times and all because it has something to do with the religion or something to do with you know some very bad remarks and all which is doesn't have to do anything i don't think that had a lot of impact also on the society but the critics has already raised uh, you know a curtain saying that you can't release it because it has this why you know a film is a mirror of a society i always believe you know whatever is being told as a uh, narrative or as a story is already happening there you know there are animals in the society and there are queens in the society you know but look at what the kind of impact queen has versus the kind of impact animal has 10 more people will get up and say that you know let's kill because it's cool you know and I, the the color uh, which which movie this shahrukh khan's movie that came out recently with dipika padukone i can't pathan uh, pathan yeah pathan you know usme wo jo rang wala gana hai that uh, 
क्या बोलते हैं वो कौन सा ऑरेंज सा जो फ्लैक वाला कलर है वो वाला कलर हाँ सो उस कलर को इतना बैकलैश मिल गया अरे भाई व्हाट्स द बिग डील इट्स कलर एट द एंड ऑफ द डे नो बडी इज ट्राइंग टू रिलेटेड टू द इंडियन फ्लैग और समथिंग 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 एवरीथिंग मतलब जो उसमें मैसेजिंग गई है जब गाने की गई है उन्होंने ये तो नहीं सोचा होगा कि वो झंडे की वजह से हमें कलर ले रहे हैं नहीं ना उन्होंने सेट की वजह से देखा होगा कि वो कलर क्यों हो रहा है एंड जस्ट बिकॉज अ फीमेल वॉज वेरिंग इट एंड इट वॉज इन अ बिगिनिंग शॉर्ट और समथिंग इट वॉज गिवन सच अमाउंट ऑफ बैक क्लैश वर्सेज इफ शाहरुख खान वॉज वेरिंग दैट शर्ट एंड मे बी इट वॉज ओपन एंड ही वॉज शोइंग दिस बॉडी कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता किसी को एवरीबडी वुड बी वोटिंग this very double standard sometimes uh, uh, with that and somewhere i believe that it also comes with the fact that women are expected to be perfect you know whether it is a perfect mother perfect daughter perfect wife there is that expectation of perfection so even the movie has to depict them as perfect anything a little bit different from that narrative is not very well accepted and uh, that is something you know you, it's okay if men are uh, smelly or men don't shave and come in front of you but a woman wherever she is uh, in whichever uh, aspect of her life she has to still look prim and proper you know she cannot be disheveled and you know she cannot be anything else but perfect so that uh, aspect is something you know which is still you know people take a lot of and and i'm talking day to day you know while talking to people uh, there is this this sort of uh, thing that comes across that no you know this is how it's supposed to be but who said it's supposed to be like that it's but, uh, it's just you know yeah like it needs to come from males only right क्या है इन टूडे सोसाइटी इफ द मेल्स सी वी लेट्स जस्ट यू नो काइंड ऑफ अग्री कहीं ना कहीं दैट इट इज अ मेल डोमिनेंट सोसाइटी ठीक है वी आर नॉट ट्राइंग टू अपोज मेल्स इन एनी वे वी आर ओनली सींग दैट वी आर इक्वल वी डिजर्व इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटी पे अस इक्वली एक्सेट्रा 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 वी आर नॉट ट्राइंग टू बैक क्लैश दम इन एनी थिंग वी आर नॉट इट्स नन ऑफ दैट द प्रॉब्लम इज वे द मैसेजिंग इज टेकन इन दैट वे कि अरे आप हमको नीचा दिखाने की कोशिश कर रहे हो नहीं हम आपको नीचा दिखाने की कोशिश नहीं कर रहे हैं हम बोल रहे हैं आप हमें नीचा मत दिखाओ आप हमारे केपेबिलिटी हमारे कैलिबर को कम ना समझें वी आर जस्ट एज स्मार्ट वी आर जस्ट एज केपेबल दैट्स वॉट वी आर सींग एंड दैट्स वेयर मेल्स हैव टू स्टेप इन एंड बी दैट स्ट्रॉन्ग पर्सन इन फ्रंट ऑफ अ वुमेन बींग लाइक नो she can do what she wants that messaging fortunately and fortunately females have to be strong there is no doubt but when a male will take a stand for it things will start to get better quicker wo utna humko ladai nahi karna padega us cheez ke liye right so males have a huge role in here and we see there are so many couples on social media you will find so many beautiful accounts that are supporting their wives now theek hai andar ki baat kisko kya pata hai but social media pe jo dikhta hai theek hai at least it's sending out a good messaging if nothing else right so we need more ma- males like that also it is uh, important for a parent or a family to maybe upbring their child if he, if has a boy child to upbring so, him in such a way that the crime rates the way he treats a women the way he treats his sister the way he treats his wife or partner becomes much more um softer and gentle he like he understands so if 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 at all his partner is going through maybe his her menstruation and she's not in a very good state he should be there to help her out help her out in the sense like he should be able to take care of her in a certain way that she needs in during during that time and that she he should not be insensitive by saying that oh it happens every month and you you can just bear with it 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 it's a very very common thing that every woman has to hear in her life be it workplace family anywhere so that needs to be taught to the child when he's at a younger age and since kyunki it's the age where he learns a lot right so he should be taught in a certain perspective that's that's what i feel I I completely agree with you Nichita and I think you know that's where at that formative years if you make it 
come across to you know whether you are male or female it's on your potential it's your capability uh, nobody will ever think of it that you know this is what a guy should be doing or this is what a girl should be doing i mean we can fix tires and a guy can make a sandwich there's no big deal about it let's not you know unnecessarily i i keep seeing these memes girl math and i, I think that's so demeaning i mean that's really so demeaning to call that uh, you know that's how we think about it and then stereotype women into uh, you know not not really being you know smart in terms of acumen and all of those things so uh, yeah i think really it it needs to start from that and that whole alpha male that creature that we've created on screen also needs to have some of those qualities which uh, we 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 have been talking about and being able to partner and uh, being an ally so it's not that feminism is saying that you know overthrow all the men it's it's not like that it's about being i think just equals in society real equals i totally agree with whatever you all had to say um you know when nichita mentioned that uh, the guy you know younger boys should be educated in a way that they can take better take take care of their partners better um when it comes to menstruation uh, even if i'm not charming but i have like an attitude or my moods are all over the place it's often labeled oh are you you know charming or something like that going on feels like that i'm not allowed to i'm not allowed to be like unhappy about anything you know uh, what are your thoughts when it comes to you know women health uh, dear zindagi is a movie which beautifully portrayed women you know being uh, not okay is also okay for a women so how what kind of an impact does it have in the corporate society when it comes to women mental health you know um, it's uh, it's sadly it's very sad actually that you know uh the whole uh, thing about women and pimping or women in mental health first of all uh, that people don't accept that you have a mental health issue uh, especially uh, after uh, you know your postpartum you know so the society doesn't accept that there's something called postpartum depression uh, now forget about that this whole ads of whisper and uh, you know period, you know this pads and all telling that you know oh it's your period get up you know you can achieve this you can do- no i don't want to you know <laughs> as, as as why are you normalizing women has to work around the clock she can just sit home be imperfect be in her pajamas and chill have chocolate and just just you know like have a normal day what are you trying to imply here that the, your pads are so good that they can soak in 20 liters of water or your pads are so good that you know they'll they'll make the women fly because obviously the messaging is not clear at all you know that has to stop that really has to stop you know the brands the kind of brands and they kind of you know oh, why and it has been always you know that you know there is a surf excel ad there's always women washing the clothes why and then and and sadly then a man comes with a nicer uh, you know surf excel and he says you know what you have been doing a dumb thing so throughout your life here's a surf excel which can why why there has to be a man why can't a woman come to a woman and say that you know what here's a surf excel because i'm a smarter woman and you know? even in one of these ads i saw that uh, you know everything is done by the women and uh, last may to make it more inclusive you know that house chores w- w- should be shared a man just comes and press the button of the washing machine and done this is his yeah. contribution but you know and, and i am sure they are not doing it uh, you know in uh, you know evidently or intentionally but that's how the scripting is done that's how the direction is done because they say that you know what if a dumb woman is washing clothes with a normal powder let there be akshay kumar say that you know what there is a surf excel which is part of version of you which is which i find it very funny you know why can't there be like a female version of it this is how the conditioning has been and it's going to take some more time sadly but you know it is uh, having an impact now i remember a couple of years ago during covid there was a dishwasher brand that <coughs> seen only women in their uh, ad, women actresses in their ad and it got so much backlash from some of the women centric uh, tabloids and magazines there were so many tweets going around like is dishwashing only for women so it was a beautiful thing to see yes yeah but look- the impact it has i think with this the dishwashing uh, you know ads still have the women only washing the dishes <laughs> but going back to you know women's health n- not just i will say not just mental health but even overall physical health so you know we see uh, there's a lot of contraceptives and all that 
usually women take and all those medicines have several side effects on the female's body but again there was not much done about it couple years ago it's not been that long maybe 5 7 years ago there was something introduced for men how they can control their thing and uh, that was given so much backlash ki are nahi aadmiyon ko ye side effects ho jayenge wo ho jayenge and god knows what all happened like this has never happened for a female never happened for a female to aap aadmiyon ke liye itna kyun kar rahe ho right suddenly that medicine i think was banned because it had so many side effects but there's no such step for a female and jabki if we see throughout the month cycle the female hormones go so much up and down throughout and every female's body is very different right and us case mein kya hota hai when the hormones go up and down there's so much difference that goes in our body uh, that whatever medicine we take there is some form of side effect to it okay whether you will end up getting nausea headache or uh, some kind of numbness swelling god knows what all internally is happening right but none of that is taken into consideration for males matlab unke liye to it's like are ye side effect ho raha nahi hum ye dawai hi band kar denge why not for females at the same time jab hum pure din ka cycle dekhte hain a home maker or even a woman you know that's going to work to sabke liye it's always ki uh, she is she will not end up taking care of herself because she is so busy taking care of everybody else but everybody does not even take a little bit of effort to take care of her or ask her at the end of the day are you doing okay should i you know just massage your feet a little bit they must be paining or anything like of course there are exceptions again there are exceptions in every case but majority is like that so it's when we talk about mental health there's so much decision making on a everyday basis that a woman has to do which is almost double the amount that the male has to do if males start to participate in household chores that amount of mental pressure is going to reduce at the end of the day and the mental health will also stabilize better right so just participating on the everyday chores and not backlashing onto everything that happens on a daily basis is going to have a much better and positive impact on the mental health that otherwise is not taken nicely agar hum in general kuch bhi bolte hain a woman has said that she is overreacting no she is not overreacting you are just not used to women reacting she is not yeah. overreacting all these years we've been labeled as no she should be quiet she should be nice and beta you have to adjust no i don't want to adjust like jagriti said i'm on my period i don't want to go out to the world and conquer the world i want to sit back watch a movie eat my chocolate the pad is not reducing my pain it's just soaking blood at the end of the yeah. day right so all those things come together and you know kind of play a role in the mental health and in the corporate world unfortunately it's not seen that positively ki bhai agar tum ghar pe ho to itna kya kaam kar liya tumne ki tum ghar pe aake kaam nahi kar sakti theek hai and agar office mein ho itna ek itna kaam hota hai bacche ko bin bacche ko dekhna hai ya office ka kaam karna hai and that is why a lot of females end up dropping after having a baby they not able to get back to the workforce just because they're just so tired of hearing and they're like acha theek hai yaar i'll just focus on one thing you know we we are uh, we are question like to have it all and all we want to have it all but how do we have it all there's so much conflict in our entire life cycle that is ongoing when we are at the peak of our uh, uh of our careers and all that's the time to have the baby fir bachcha bada ho jata hai fir that is the time when you step into leadership roles how do you compensate nothing ever like that is ever questioned to a man there are so many interviews of celebrities that are questioned ki are aap yahan pe wo interview kar rahe ho aapke bachche ke sath kaun hai like bhai you are a male interviewing here aapke bachche ke sath kaun hai aap kyun nahi ho wahan pe Nobody is questioning the male. 
right so yes. that's, that's like and i can go on and on about it there's just no much to talk but i like you get the idea when it comes to uh, mental health even asking this smaller question are aapke bacche ke sath kon aap idhar interview pe aaye what do you have to do it is my freaking personal life you have no role in it आप देखने आ रहे हो मेरे बच्चे को नहीं ना तो इट्स इट्स ओके बट टू जस्ट बोरो फ्रॉम द सेम थ्रेड व्हाट यशना एंड वाज वाज सेइंग अबाउट मेंटल हेल्थ आई थिंक सी द फैक्ट इज यू नो आई मीन आई पर्सनली सिंस आई वेंट टू टू प्रेगनेंसीज वाइल बीइंग इन अ जॉब द द काइंड ऑफ statements that you hear not necessarily always from work but even from larger society how will you manage that's the first question thrown at you and that itself puts you into such a self doubting position where you never you know even if you were thinking that yeah i'll i'll sort of you know i'll have it all the minute we people keep saying that how will you manage how will you manage we we go through so much of self doubt as women and uh, that is really you know you having just that one person that one cheerleader who say you know what you'll be able to come back from it you'll be able to bounce back from it that makes a world of a difference if you just have this army of people who are just going to tell you no you're not going to come back how on earth do we ever expect that ratio to increase of women returning back to workforce being able to manage it uh, you know there are though we have all these initiatives in various organizations it's day to day these you know sort of interactions that people have with people you know within whether it is the boss whether it is the team about how they are being perceived you know the minute you have your baby if you have to go uh, for a travel it's automatically said that she will not be able to manage she has a kid have you even asked her that's something out of the question or somebody who comes towards a typical marriageable age let's not hire she may get married and have a kid so what if she has a kid it's not the end of the world you know it's it's really not the end of the world and uh, that's been happening it's it's human nature i don't think it's such a it's a big event for sure in your life but if you have a support you know things can bounce back so this is i think it's very it, it's th- these questions don't get asked to men at all and and that's a big difference I understand. It's very sad, you know. I have sat with a couple of companies for interviews, and I'm in my mid twenties. So one question that's often thrown my way is, um, uh, when are you looking to get married? Because then, uh, I don't know how that has an impact on my work or, you know, me getting married. Ha- what it has to do with my chances of getting employed with your company, and it really, fe- you know, fills me with a lot of rage. And to Uh, kind of disengage from that emotion i often uh, you know find my solace in music um female centric music let's talk about that taylor swift eras tour it has impacted the you know economy of an entire country there are so many people for example techno music had only like it was a male dominant industry but now we have eli and far we have korolova who are you know doing better than most of the uh, male singers not to draw comparison but yeah everybody has their own journey but still they are emerging so how do you think women in music are making an impact on us even the lyrics for that matter it's like so empowering so what are your thoughts on that i think one of the recent uh, thing that has won my heart and it also won befta award was you know uh, miley cyrus flower okay and one of the lines that you know that hit me really hard you know that i can write my name on sand and i can get myself flower you know and it was also commercially hit uh, that and that's that's about the west uh, coming back to india i think the whole music industry is always been ruled by women people like lata mangeshkar or people like you know uh, till now also sunidhi chauhan and all is just that the recognition is not there when it is in west there's a rihana there is a taylor swift there is a, you know a madonna uh, there is lady gaga then obviously the acceptance is more uh, films and songs like you know pataka guddi from nooran sisters and all they don't receive that kind of uh, you know um, appreci- appreciation that it deserves you know if you have seen the parad pataka guddi if you have heard the song pataka guddi and the lyrics is so beautiful so soulful perfectly defines the women uh you know in our society yet not receiving the kind of uh, you know uh, appreciation that it should you know uh, it's it is you know and i think the arts are is going to some take some more time but obviously there are fund uh, you know runners you know people like sunidhi chauhan and all who are taking it uh, you know uh, a way forward 
uh, you know uh, neha or i don't know if you know the singer her name is also not neha kakkar but there's another neha uh, who has done this jag ghumaya and she she also produces a lot of female centric songs uh, jasmine sandlis again you know so i i think uh, you know the needle is moving uh, not as fast as, as it should be but it will take some time the west has already accepted uh, we'll take some time you know ag- again you know because the sun sets slightly slower at uh, this part of the you know uh, world so it's as simple as that yeah and, and so, i think mo- uh, like you know songs lyrics which objectify women do you think they do better in the box office they definitely do well even uh, you know films also that objectifies a women does a, lo- a lot of well in the society which is really sad you know and uh, and those kind of uh, f- songs are doing very good in our society and you know i've seen women only making reels on that and you know trending it and all which is you know uh, i think it's we who need to stop you know it's as simple as that we need to stop first i think uh, jagriti very nicely mentioned about the song of flowers because it's being compared if you you know you're in your uh this age so there's a lot of uh, scrolling done and i'm sure you must have seen the real clip of the bruno mars song versus the miley cyrus flowers song that comparison which has been done like i'll get you flowers and she's like i can buy my own flowers <laughs> and that is a beautiful comparison like at the end of the day the females are not looking for somebody who can spend money on them they're looking for a partner who can be you know their companion and a good relationship a positive uh you know like a, a positive connection in the two people that's what a woman is looking at and i think that is what the why that difference in the song is very beautifully done where bruno mars is saying oh i'll get you diamonds i'll get you a necklace and this and that and then the girl is like i'll, I'll get my own flowers i'll get my own necklace i don't need you for that that's very nicely done as far as taylor swift is concerned i think uh she in herself like if we see her growth from uh, her her really old songs um and one of the major hits was i think love story right and then when she, when she transitioned her journey when she got fed up of everything and she said i'm going to be a new person altogether she came up with the i think a uh, blank space if i'm not wrong uh, so that she came up with an entire reputation album reputation album yes telling everyone that watch me shine now <laughs> yeah and it's been beautifully done theek hai she's been very vocal about her relationships and all of that in her life and that has portrayed through her songs everybody uh, not not everybody but like a lot of people have uh, you know questioned her about are iska ye relationship hai are ye toot gaya ye to kahaniyan likhti rehti hai similarly if a male uh, if a male singer is writing about his life in the songs i don't think that's ever been questioned right why is a female being questioned about that but in the growth journey of taylor swift she says i don't care anymore i make music i love making music the audience likes what i do and that's what i'm going to do i'm not going to be bothered by these questions so this entire journey of self discovery and growth and that it's okay to change after a while and you can explore different versions of yourself as you grow that's just beautiful and that shows how confident a woman is in herself how secure she is in herself and that's and i think that messaging goes really well um also i feel um when it comes to india and the indian singers mostly uh, hindi like indian sing- uh, songs and music is related to the cinema we have songs in our movies usually west does, does not uh, go with that pattern and um, the indian singers the indian female singers are majorly shown in this soft and subtle romantic song kind of a light there are few singers which have gone beyond the boundaries and be become the pop stars or maybe the pop singers or brought in a new wave to the hindi music but the the most of the conventional even if you see the reality shows most of the conventional hindi singers the female singers are 
सिंगिंग की द लता मंगेशकर सॉन्ग्स और आशा भोसले सॉन्ग्स विच आर नॉट दो विच आर वेरी लाइक द रोमांटिक सॉन्ग्स यूजली द सॉफ्टर सॉन्ग्स देर आर वेरी फ्यू सिंगर्स द अपकमिंग सिंगर्स हु ट्राई टू बी मे बी एन उषा उत्तुप ट्राई टू बी मे बी एन अलीशा चिनोय ट्राई टू बी मे बी ए सुनिधि चौहान हु आर हैविंग अ डिफरेंट जॉनर ऑफ म्यूजिक बिकॉज दैट्स वेरी लेस एक्सेप्टेड देल से ओ वाव दे सिंग सो नाइस बट दे दे वोट एक्सेप्टेड टू देर डेली प्ले लिस्ट दे विल स्टिल गो बैक टू दैट लता मंगेशकर लग जा गले विच इज फिफ्टी सिक्सटी ईयर्स ओल्ड सो दैट इज हाउ आई फील द डायनामिक्स आर इन द प्रेजेंट जेनरेशन but maybe that's got nothing to do with women empowerment and all that's just like a personal take on what we like to hear on a daily basis how we want our mind to be if we want like if we like a soft vibe you're going to listen to that kind of a playlist and it's just a background playlist right you're not thinking ki acha isme women empowerment ho raha hai nahi ho raha hai main gana sunungi ya nahi sunungi you're not thinking that so it's a lot of a uh, personal decision at that point but uh, if we if we come back to taylor swift swift i think uh, her whole evolution the way she has evolved right from love story till uh, the recent eras to uh, the way she has portrayed i think she's been you know very uh, you know kind of very open out there whether people talk about her sort of give a damn attitude uh, and and yeah you know maybe just because it's her or just because it's a female uh, singer people have been you know really speculating so much about her relationships but she still continues to do what she's doing and i think that has found a lot of uh, acceptance with people and probably that's why to it you know she's gained that kind of uh, a uh, starter man you know she's making waves in the music industry because she's just doing what she's doing and enjoying that it and whatever happens is you know sort of in the background uh, probably i think that's what we as well you know kind of need to do because if if we are evolving the roles of women are evolving uh, it's it's perfectly okay to say that was what i was maybe 2 years ago and this is sort of a different version of myself it's it's nothing wrong with that and you know just focus on what you what you're supposed to do rather than all those background noise that that comes up with that so i i find personally i found it very uh, interesting to see the way she has still you know kind of continued uh, doing her own thing lovely great insights guys um one of the most evident indicators of you know women centric movies albums are uh, their performance in the critical circles films such as wonder woman and you know captain marvel have shattered the myth around superhero as well and they have not only earned significant revenue worldwide but they have also you know earned praise for the direction their storytelling their performance um it was lovely talking to you ladies today um i you thoroughly enjoyed myself i was like smiling year to year throughout seeing you know uh, having t- spoken to you all and understanding your mindset in this before we conclude our podcast i want to understand from you all what's the one change you wish to see in the entertainment industry you know that could significantly boost the representation and success of women centric narratives i think for me i think one thing that needs to stop our change is you know objectifying women as a sex toy or, or you know showing a women as just a beauty without a brain uh, sadly it is still happening till now uh, you know uh, if a woman is a part of the story she should contribute to the story or instead of just being there for the heck of it if that one thing changes i think we will be able to take, take the cinema by storm you know i'd say equal pay i think female is just they work hard like or harder sometimes to be where they are because there are more obstacles in a woman's life than a male's life in general uh, so i think equal pay um i would I say think, uh, yeah sorry go ahead. yeah yeah so uh, i think uh, women centric movies without male actors or predominant male actors like if it's a women centric film of women should be leading that i still feel there are films where they they need a man to just back back the film because they feel that if just a woman will do the film the film might not get the numbers that they are looking for so i think that is that needs to be a bit more uh, streamlined and if it's a women centric movie it should be a women centric movie and they they need not a man for it i guess 
Yeah. Um, as I mentioned that, yeah, it, it's, it's, we should look at breaking stereotypes. I don't think, uh, you know, it, it, it needs to be that if she is a good girl, she has straight hair. If she is a badass, she has curly hair. Uh, if she is a, a mom, she'll wear a salwar kameez. And if she is, you know, a little bit modern, she'll wear a suit to go to office. I think we need to get out of that. You can do whatever you want to do. And uh, that will really impact a lot of people subconsciously, unconsciously, and um, hopefully change the narrative otherwise. I completely agree with you all. I think a pantsuit or, you know, a salwar suit should not define if I'm successful or not. Um, we should stop stereotyping colors and, you know, certain uh, styles to be women-centric. Only I'm not a bad girl if I have red hair and a good girl if I have, you know, I'm a, uh, I have black hair. So yeah, um, long way to go, but we are definitely in the stepping steps of it. Um, so lovely connecting with you ladies today. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, we look forward to have you all again in our future podcasts. I hope you all have enjoyed yourselves as well.